Hello and welcome back to Fourier Transform, the video series where we talk a lot about so-called Fourier series and what we can do with them. Indeed, in today's part 16, I show you how we can use the approximation method of Fourier series to calculate some complicated sums. This might not be a surprise for you, because in the case we have pointwise convergence of the Fourier series, we get a whole bunch of sum formulas out. However, before I show how this actually works, I first want to thank all the nice people who support the channel on Steady, here on YouTube or via other means. And please use the link in the description to download additional material for the videos. For example, you find books, PDF versions and quizzes. Then without further ado, let's immediately start considering an example. I want to have a 2 pi periodic function, so let's sketch the graph here. And I want to have the zeros of the function at minus pi and pi, and otherwise it should be a nice parabola. So it's not so complicated, and the minimum here I want to have at minus pi squared. So these are all our requirements, and with those our function is completely determined. The only thing missing is that we want to extend the whole thing to pi periodically. And now you see the result we have is a continuous function defined on r, which is also piecewise c1. And from the last videos we already know that for such a function the corresponding Fourier series is uniformly convergent to the original function. So in particular it's also pointwise convergent at every point which means we get a sum formula at every point. Indeed a nice sum formula will come out and I will not spoil that right now. First let's fix all the definitions we have and we start with the definition of the function f. It should be our 2 pi periodic function sketched above, which means we have to give a definition inside the interval minus pi to pi. Which simply means we write down the equation of this parabola. And now it's easy to check that this is simply x squared minus pi squared. It's clearly a parabola, it has the correct zeros at minus pi and pi and the minimum minus pi squared at the origin. Hence this formula is correct for x inside the interval minus pi to pi. Hence in the next step we just calculate the Fourier coefficients of this function f. And as usual we take the complex ones given by the name ck. And you know they are defined by our special inner product ek with f. And as a quick reminder this simply means we have 1 over 2 pi and then the integral from minus pi to pi of the exponential function times f. And now often in order to calculate this integral we want to use integration by parts. However this integration by parts only works if k is non-zero which means the case c0 is the exception case we have to consider first. But the good thing is this is also often a simple calculation because it's just the integral of f. Which means in our case we have to integrate x squared minus pi squared. This is not hard at all because we can immediately write down an antiderivative. And in this case we have 1 third times x cubed minus pi squared times x. And these two things we have to evaluate at pi and minus pi. And since we subtract this lower limit, we actually get the same result twice. So we can write we have 2 times 1 third pi cubed minus pi squared times pi, which is also pi cubed. And now we can simply put everything together and we see that we get minus 2 thirds times pi squared. So there we have it, this is our coefficient c0. And then in the next step we can just calculate all the coefficients ck for a non-vanishing k. Of course this is actually the hard case where we have to do some more complicated calculations. And there I mean that we have to do integration by parts as often as needed. Indeed from the last video we already know that integration by parts brings us to the formula 1 over ik times the inner product ek with f prime. This formula makes sense because the derivative of f exists in the whole interval from minus pi to pi. Moreover the formula also only works because the function f is continuous on the whole real number line as well. 
Okay, so now let's use the formula to calculate the next integral. So we have this whole factor in front of the integral from minus pi to pi again. And now inside we just have the derivative of f, which is 2 times x. And there I should immediately see that integration by parts helps again, because we can reduce this linear function to a constant. More precisely, again we would say the exponential function is u prime and the other one is v. Hence finding the primitive of u is not hard at all, it's the same thing as before, we just have to add the constant in front of the exponential function. And even easier is calculating the derivative of v. And now we can put everything together for the integration by parts formula. So first we have u times v evaluated at the limits. So let's multiply both functions and then we put in pi and minus pi. And then we just have to subtract the integral of u times v prime. And this one now is a really easy integral because it's just the integral of the exponential function. And since it goes from minus pi to pi, we already know that the value of this integral has to be zero. Simply because the antiderivative we get here is the exponential function again, which is a 2 pi periodic function. Obviously this is very nice, because only the first term remains after doing the integration by parts. And as you can see, the first part is not hard to calculate at all. Maybe the first thing we should do is to pull out all the constants. Then the factor 2 cancels and we also find k squared in the denominator. Moreover, minus 1 and i squared also cancel out. And then we can just use pi and minus pi for the exponential function and the linear term x. And please don't forget that the lower limit is always subtracted. Okay, and with that we are done. And now you should see this term comes in a lot. It's the exponential function at i k pi. And this is important. This is not a fixed value because it can be either plus or minus 1 depending on k. And now it's not hard to see that we can actually write that as minus 1 to the power k. And in addition you should see that the minus sign inside the exponential function does not change this behavior at all, because we have a 2 pi periodic function as always. So actually what we get here is the same thing twice. Which means our result here is simply 2 times minus 1 to the power k divided by k squared. Hence, the result is that we have all the coefficients and we can form the whole Fourier series. And moreover, we already know that the Fourier series converges uniformly. So in particular, it also converges pointwisely. Which means inside our interval minus pi to pi, our parabola is equal to the Fourier series. And this one you know is simply the infinite sum ck times ek. And there we can just put in what we already know about the coefficient ck, which means c0 separately and then all the other ck's. Therefore we have minus 2 thirds times pi squared plus an infinite sum again. And inside there we find our coefficients from before times the exponential function again. However, there you should definitely know Euler's formula, which means that this exponential function can be written as cosine plus i sine function. This is important because we already know that the left hand side is a real number, so the right hand side in this equality also has to be a real number. This means that we can take the real part on the right hand side without changing anything, which implies that only the cosine function remains. And moreover, the cosine function is also an even function, so it does not matter if we put in minus k or plus k. Hence we can just take one part of this infinite sum times 2. Obviously this is much simpler because now we just have the sum going from k is equal to 1 to infinity. And inside the sum we have the same coefficients times the cosine function. So this is our full formula and let's make it a little bit nicer by bringing this constant to the left hand side as well. Therefore what we get is that for all x inside our interval, x squared minus 1 third pi squared is equal to the infinite sum of 4 divided by k squared times minus 1 to the power k times the cosine function of k times x. 
And we know even more, namely the convergence of this series is uniformly in X. So you see the theory of Fourier series gives us a nice identity for an infinite sum. In particular, now each point X in the interval can give us a different infinite sum formula. For example, we can put in x is equal to 0 to get rid of the cosine function on the right hand side. So let's do that to see what formula we can get. There the left hand side is just minus 1 third times pi squared and on the right hand side we see that the cosine of 0 is always 1. Hence we have a simple sum formula for this alternating sum. So maybe we can also bring the factor 4 to the other side to get a nicer formula. It tells us that the alternating sum of 1 over k squared is equal to minus 1 divided by 12 times pi squared. And there you see this is really a nice result of the Fourier theory because we would have no idea how to calculate such a sum. In other words, now we have an explicit proof of exactly this fact. However, I don't want to stop there because I want to show you a second example of a sum formula just by using Parseval's identity. At this point you should know this identity very well because it tells us that we can sum up the absolute value of ck squared and we just get out the L2 norm of our original function f. But obviously this one is also squared. And there you can already see by putting in the coefficient ck we get an infinite sum on the left hand side but maybe just a number we can calculate on the right hand side. In other words also Parseval's identity can give us a nice sum formula. However what we have to do on the left hand side you already know we have to pull out the constant c0 because this one was an exception in the formula. However for all the other cases we can use what we have calculated. And this was 2 times minus 1 to the power k divided by k squared. And there you can already see the minus 1 to the power k will vanish in the absolute value anyway. And in addition similarly to before we also see that we can split up this infinite sum into two parts. This means we can write two times the infinite sum that starts with k is equal to 1 and goes to infinity. And inside we find 4 divided by k to the power 4. And on the other hand we can also put in what we know of c0 and we just have to square it. And there I can just tell you it's 4 divided by 9 times pi to the power 4. Okay so this is the whole left hand side of Parseval's identity and now we can go to the right hand side. This one is the inner product of f with itself but we know that the inner product is given by an integral with a factor 1 divided by 2 pi in front. Hence inside the integral we find our quadratic function squared. In other words we just get a polynomial of degree 4 which is not hard to integrate at all. For this reason I will skip the calculation and just tell you the result. It's 8 divided by 15 times pi to the power 4. And now we can just bring the other constant with pi from the left hand side to the right hand side and we get a sum formula for this nice sum. So you see it's not so complicated you just have to calculate with some fractions. And then by dividing with the factor 8 we get the sum formula for 1 over k to the power 4. And obviously it has to do something with pi to the power 4 and simply this one divided by 90. And there we have it by using the same Fourier series as before we got out a second nice sum formula. Also this one might be a surprising gift from the Fourier series theory. So you can remember by having a suitable function you can expand into a Fourier series you might get out some nice sum formulas. Our only restriction was that we need a continuous piecewise c1 function. However since we didn't use the uniform convergence just the pointwise convergence at one point we might ask the question if we can weaken that assumption a little bit. And exactly this question we will answer with the next videos. So really hope we meet again and have a nice day. Bye bye.